Marvel Studios Hawkeye is always on target thanks to VFX supervisor Greg Steele. Hey, Greg. Hey, Lorraine. How are you? Uh, thanks for having me today. Oh, I am doing excellent. But you know, much like Kate, I am dying to know more about all of the different trick arrows in Hawkeye's arsenal. So how did you and the production team work together to create these arrows? The props department's really involved in coming up with a lot of these designs, which is great. I mean, the, the work they did in building these, you know, they're like little pieces of artwork in terms of the, uh, the complexity and the, the design aesthetic. It, it's really great. And it all lives within the, the realm of what's come before in the other films. And, you know, the arrows uh, that the characters were holding were not real, but they were based on things the prop department had put together, like the, the tip of the pim arrow was, you know, had a blue illumination in the word you could read it. We scan pretty much everything we do when we're on the film. So we'll scan all the locations and the, the actors and the props also. You've got the geometry, which is the foundational shape of it. And then you go in and you try to replicate the feeling of the, uh, the surfacing quality. So the, the shininess, how beat up it is, you know, where there's little lights that could turn on, things like that. Uh, and then you age it and try to make it look like it kind of belongs in the real world versus being totally synthetic. It's definitely a lot of work, but it's so worth it when you see it in scenes like the epic car chase in episode three. What are some of the different arrows we see in that scene and how did you bring them to life? So the putty arrow is uh, one of the first arrows that Kate shoots during the car chase. Once the arrow hits, it expands and creates this almost like expansion foam type quality. So to create something like that, we ended up just shooting the plate of the truck driving. And then in post-production, we did uh, effect simulations on the, on the glass. So they, they referenced material that we had found of expansion foam and some slimes and things like that that everyone liked. And then basically put it all together and just kind of gave uh, a really kind of goopy, messy look. The explosive arrow was one that was launched by Kate at the beginning of the sequence. It jams into the uh, the bumper of a van and causes a giant explosion as it flips end over end, kind of rolling towards them almost. The special effects team and the stunts team rigged up uh, two different events of a real van. One was to get it rolling, so it could be kind of chasing along after the car, and one to get it going initially. And then it was up to us and visual effects to kind of help augment that a little bit, you know, clean up the stunt rigging. We added some additional fire and uh, some other explosions to kind of just make it all tie together amongst the shots. The suction cup arrow is what appears to be a very benign suction cup arrow at the beginning of the sequence, which ends up actually saving them at the end as Clint suction cup onto a, a subway car as it's speeding below on the Manhattan Bridge. So the Octo Grabber arrow is an arrow device that shoots cables out from itself and then pulls back in. Kate basically fires the Octo Arrow into the front of the truck that Kazi's driving. It spools out all these cables inside the Christmas lot which they're driving through and pulls all the Christmas trees, causing them to smash all over the, the vehicle and kind of make them drive out of control and crash. We shot all the plates without Christmas trees in the lot. So we left space in a Christmas tree lot dressed with trees that the cars could kind of drive through and the stuntmen could kind of do the, all the action they needed to do. For most of the shots, we were putting all these computer generated trees that were built, you know, based on some reference that we had. There's some that are wrapped in, encased in kind of a wrapping and some just kind of furled out. They built those and then they rigged them up so they could simulate such that if you smashed a tree into something, it would, you know, all the branches and all the pine needles would do what they're supposed to. So the acid arrow is utilized when Kate and Clint are speeding towards an intersection with uh, cross traffic and they need to basically create a hole in the traffic so they can sneak through with the guys chasing after them. So Clint hands uh, Kate two acid arrows and she's instructed to shoot them at the traffic lights. They fly through the air and they hit a CG traffic light pole. Uh, it burns away and they kind of fall to the ground simmering and smoldering. The PIM arrow, um, there's two forms of PIM arrows. There's the ones that shrink, and then there's the ones that grow much larger. At the end of the sequence, they're trapped, the car's been smashed, and Clint tells Kate to take a, an, a regular arrow and shoot it up in the sky. We see that Clint has got a, a blue PIM arrow, and he fires at it as the arrow's coming down, and it scales up and chops the truck basically in half. It was something that we had played around with in terms of how the arrow could go through the truck. I believe it was Kevin, uh, who had the idea, he said, no, no, shoot it straight up and then have it come straight down and chop the truck in half. Uh, and it ended up uh, actually working out really well. Everything in that environment is all CG. So, you know, the bridge, the environment of New York and all that was all basically replicated. You know, it's a real synergistic thing between stunts and special effects and visual effects. That's one of the fun things about the job is actually being able to kind of work with all the different teams to put this together.
Well, it takes a village, and just when we think we've seen it all, you pull out all of the stops for that final battle in the finale. Now, what are some of the arrows that you bring back and some of the new arrows that you introduced for this scene? So the Luminous Arrow was, I think, the first arrow that Kate shoots inside the ice rink. And that's basically a huge blinding light just to try to kind of blind them so they can kind of get some cover. I'd say, you know, 95% of the shots were shot in Atlanta on a back lot. For us, it was taking all the footage um, that we had shot and just augmenting what was, you know, like a one-story building and turn it into a big 65-floor high-rise skyscraper in New York. The electromagnetic arrow is something that's used at the beginning of the ice rink fight. The big question during prep was when we were kind of designing this was, why don't all the bad guys just shoot them once they're down inside the rink? So we came up with this gag of Clint shooting an electromagnetic arrow at the flagpole. And it basically creates this electro net all around the ice rink and it pulls all of the metal based weaponry out of the bad guy's hands and kind of sticks it to the, uh, the flagpoles. In post, we put in the electro aspect of it with the lightning bolts and electricity and things like that. So the acid arrow comes back actually in the final battle. It's before Clint lets Kate use all the good trick arrows uh, when they get down to the ice. She's basically up in F.A.O. Schwartz and Clint is stuck in a tree at this point. So she basically fires it at the trunk of the tree and cause the, uh, the weight of the tree to actually fall over. Clint goes flying, everything is a hot mess down on the ice rink. Special effects built us a special tree trunk that we could actually crack. Our vendor team put in a, uh, the acid that was eating away at it, you know, causing bubbles and smoke coming off it. And then the tree itself, as that falls, it just has a massive amount of simulation going on. Kate fires the needle arrow towards a place where a bunch of tracksuit mafia are standing. So she fires it, it hits the ice, it winds up small needles about, you know, like a porcupine, go flying out of this thing and just stabbing into all the guys around it, just kind of causing mayhem basically at the beginning of the fight. The actual final effect was designed uh, during post-vis as we were doing it. You know, uh, you, we had the actual plates and we, we just basically implemented a CG version of that shooting into all the, all the actors who were miming getting hit by the, uh, the different needles. Needles. The Trank arrow is an arrow that is a delivery system, yet again. So the main arrow goes into a guy's shoulder. So it's just a bunch of little hypodermic needles that shoot into the different characters. But the performances, again, uh, for something like that, it was really what sell it. The airbag, again, is, is one of those great combinations between stunts and visual effects and second unit teams. Like it was something that the stunts teams came up with in their stunt biz about this concept of a cool airbag that could kind of go under the characters and grow huge and send them flying into the air. To actually implement that, the stunt team set up a bunch of cranes and they could kind of actually pull the characters up into the air. So we were able to actually use real people doing the stunts versus having to go to like a digi double all the time. The sonic concussion arrow is an arrow that first gets revealed in episode four, and that's basically a, an arrow that creates a, a large kind of a three-beat concussive uh, sonic blast. So again, we used uh, similar techniques uh, to what we had done, you know, creating these concentric uh, compressed air simulations to kind of just make it feel very powerful and concussive. The, the giant explosion arrow that kind of happens at the end of the ice rink sequence is very similar to the one that took out the van earlier, but for the most part, the lighting teams created some interactive light for us. The stunt team rigged up some performers to come flying through the air, get up off the ground, and get pulled by these cables and come flying forward. Visual effects wise, we ended up adding all the explosion and the debris that would fly. The splitting of the regular arrow. So Clint's down to two arrows with three bad guys coming at him. So what he does is he fires one and then quickly fires another one with greater force, causing that second arrow to cut through the first arrow, splitting it in half, so he basically creates three arrows. We created all the camera movement in computer graphics. We had our virtual set, so we could put them anywhere and just kind of move the camera through it. So we, we chased along behind the arrow in animation and split it, added effect simulations and things like that to make it very clear that it's a wooden arrow. The Pym arrow comes back again in the ice rink fight, but this time instead of actually making something gigantic, it's used to shrink down something. And there's several tracksuit mafia that are careening a big truck into the ice rink to try to kind of smash uh, Kate and Clint as a last ditch effort. And as it's coming towards them, Kate pulls out a Pym shrinking arrow and fires it at the van, shrinking it down. 
you know, we shot as much as we could with the, with the actors in the frame, uh, but a lot of those shots ended up just being fully computer generated with the trucks barreling across the plaza because we had built our, our CG environment. We could just drive our CG trucks through it. We had computer generated people standing down there as the truck hurls towards them. So after that moment, you know, Kate turns to Clint and says, well, I wasn't really expecting it to end that way type thing. This kind of odd moment where a uh, owl comes in and takes that little truck away. Well, there's that. Now, was that a real owl or was it something that you had to create in post with CGI? It was a CG owl. It was Kevin's idea to have the owl in the tree. He obviously read about the owl that was in the Rockefeller tree that year and they called it Rocky. So that's what we've called our little owl. And she's uh, really small. She's only about yay big. And uh, she's, she looks just like the real one. And it was a very specific type. So we matched pretty much all the feathering and everything to make it look as authentic as possible. Uh, but she's very adorable. <laughs> That she is. And now, looking back at this entire series, what was your favorite part of working on it? I mean, the content itself is amazing. One of the original Avengers, you know, his storyline and handing the mantle over to Kate Bishop. It's a really cool storyline that we're, we're all very excited to be working on. Everyone's kind of at their A game on these projects, and uh, it's really neat to be able to kind of collaborate with them. That's probably one of my favorite parts of the whole process. Teamwork makes the dream work. <laughs> Thank you so much, Greg. And of course, go check out all of those trick arrows in Marvel Studios Hawkeye, now streaming all episodes only on Disney+.